Welcome to a new episode of Hacks and Hobbies with your host, Junaid Ahmed. In this episode, I'm going to talk about the process of podcasting. The podcasting, like anything else, is a continuous process. It's a continuous learning process because you're literally learning all the things that you need to know need to be able to do to one get the podcast recorded interviews recorded you're getting all this content recorded and saved on your computer but now you've got to save or you got to spend time to edit these audios make sure it sounds clean make sure everything is good and then you can send it out to the world uh, meaning publish it to the podcast universe now, there's something new I had tried on some of the episodes past a um, couple weeks ago, and that is, I was talking about, the beginning of the episode, I was talking about a previous interview, and it kind of throws people off, I guess, or threw off one person, but nobody else has come up and talked to me about the situation um, of promoting previous interviews on my podcast because you know it's kind of it's kind of proactive in my opinion and um, I've got to market I've got to basically inform you not just market but inform you of the past interviews and and if you haven't if you only heard the latest interview then you would uh, not have any idea of what we talked about in the previous episode or who we talked to uh, although you absolutely have the ability to look through the uh, the list of episodes of who is previously came and gone, I think I should uh, take a, go back and listen to episodes from my favorite podcasters, um, Jonathan Stark in the Business of Authority with with uh, Rochelle and. Um, <clears throat> Tim Ferriss's amazing podcasts and all the other ones that that I look up to essentially and um, that will hopefully help me get better at my podcasting. So there's a lot of struggles, there's a lot of things that you gotta look out for and we do not have unlimited time. <laughs> there's never unlimited time. It's always fleeting, it's always moving forward. So the, the one thing is um, either you can bring on a team of, of um, editors, a team of editors to edit the, your podcast and, and publish, it, publish them or have it ready so then you can publish it yourself. Um, the other is having somebody to transcribe the podcast text into text. So that can go on the blog page on the episode show notes and <coughs> there's a lot of things involved in publishing a podcast now that's only the publishing part of it so if you break it down there's many aspects of podcasting there's the hosting part who's going to host the podcast there's many options and then the recording aspect of it how am I going to record the podcast? Am I going to record it on my phone? Am I recording on my computer? Do I need to get a microphone? Um, right, so host, recording, editing, and then publishing. And then once you're done with the pub, with all of these four steps, um, well, host, you've got to only decide the first time you're going to start. When you just thought about you know, starting a podcast, you got to think about okay, who's going to host my podcast. Is it going to be Podbean, Libsyn, um, on your own WordPress setup, or are you going to use Anchor? Once you've decided these things, um, some of these services you got to pay monthly fee, and they'll like they basically will either take care of distributing your podcast to other platforms, or you have to go figure out that distribution for yourself. For example, if you're hosting the podcast on your own site through WordPress plugin or whatnot, you would have to go over to Apple uh, to create your podcast on iTunes directory. You'll have to go to Google 
to create your podcast to the Google directory, the Google podcast. You have to go to Spotify. You have to go to um, Stitcher. You have to go to um, TuneIn and iHeartRadio. <clears throat> and basically, every platform that you think your audience might listen to your podcast on, you need to go out there, Overcast. You have to go out there and create those accounts for yourself for your podcast and submit it to their directories so you have a broader reach um, and most of the cases I think I've had the same experience uh, on hosting it myself on on WordPress site or setting up through Libsyn they will give you an RSS feed that you then got to go up and you know set it up on the different platforms that you want your podcast to be on and Podbean I don't have much experience, but I did see somebody who was using it. They've been around for a while as well. Or you could go with Anchor. Now, Anchor is amazing. They have a mobile app that you can use to record. They already take care of the hosting. They take care of the distribution as well because they are like, you know, it's 2017, it's 2018, it's 2019. If you want to start doing a podcast, you shouldn't have to worry about any of these things. I mean... Anybody who's thinking of publishing a video a video channel, they don't have to think much about it at all. They can either go to Vimeo, they can either go to YouTube. There's so many platforms. All you gotta do is you gotta record your video and upload it. There's even Facebook. There's you know there's so many platforms for video. So why should that why should, should why should it be so confusing and complicated for audio, which is so much easier to consume and create. So Anchor changed the game, and recently they uh, they're in talks to be acquired by Spotify, which means that we're gonna get a lot of awesome tools. So yeah, so those are those are four main things that you gotta worry about when you're starting a podcast. Who's gonna host it? Which different distribution networks do I need to go to? You know, um, and then you got to worry about, okay, now I've got to record the podcast. Okay, where do I record it? Do I just record it using voice memos on my phone? Sure, that's not bad at all because um, iPhone has created some really um, intelligent systems on the device that will isolate your voice from the environment. There's three microphones on the, on the iPhone, which does noise canceling. And, and environment canceling to a really good extent. The number two is the way to record is, of course, you have a microphone connected to your iPhone or iPad. And then you can, uh, you can even use different applications on the these devices to record. The other way is, of course, you're recording on a desktop with a heavy-duty microphone or with a regular microphone, it all comes down to, okay, what's the level of audio quality do you want to get? The higher the quality, the higher the um, attendance, the higher the number of people that will come and listen and um, pay attention to. So that's um, three different ways to record your podcast. Well, two. Either you're mobile, either you're on the computer. Well, there's a third way. You get an audio recorder. This is dedicated audio recorder, uh, and there's many different models. There's ones from Zoom. Zoom has some. There's um, Tascam has some. So there's many different audio recorders that you can get to record your audio. And some of these recorders are really high-end. You can plug in a full-end microphone, you know, high-end microphone or any plug-in microphone on it to record your audio. So you minimize that noise, you minimize um, catching surrounding sounds, unless that's the kind of podcast you're trying to create. It all comes down to what is your target audience, what is it that you're trying to get out of it. Okay, we've got multiple things down. We've got hosting, we've got hosting figured out. We've got distribution platform figured out. We've got the recording figured out. Number The next one is publishing. Now, publishing is important. Do you publish your podcast as is? As you're recording it, you're publishing it. So all the ums and ahs or, well, ums and ahs are okay because especially if you're having a conversation with somebody, then those are okay. Those pauses, they they 
relate to listening to a conversation among two friends or two colleagues or two uh, acquaintances, whatever it is, um, it helps to translate to carry over that conversation, that context, the context is very important. So the context is carried over through the audio in that format if you keep those ums and ums. Um, there are some audio processing that I recommend, you know, noise removal, uh, removing of sounds that distract the audience from the message. It, it all comes down to, you know, what are you trying to aim? I mean, is it is this a, is this just your hobby? You know, what is the purpose behind this episode? Now, today is a rainy day, so you might hear some raindrops coming in as I drive under these trees, these big blobs of raindrops dropping on the car. <clears throat> so those are some of the things you look at and uh, when you're doing a podcast. Publishing is done. Now comes the point of um, having show notes available, having links available, right? Links and show notes and transcription service. So do you bring on the transcription service or do you have enough time to transcribe the audio into text by yourself? Well, I know it's a lot of time consuming, especially if you have to listen to your own self and write the words down that you talked about already. So there's a few different apps that you can use. There's otter.ai. This app is amazing. It is, they give you 600 minutes for free every month. So you can upload your audio from your podcast app or when you're done with your publishing process, when you're done with the editing process, uh, you can, and you're done publishing, it's already out on the internet. You can bring the audio up to otter.ai. It will convert, it'll take, it'll, it'll, it uses uh, artificial intelligence to convert your text into audio. Sorry, the other way around, it'll take your audio and it convert it into text. And now you can look at the text and see if it makes sense. And you have the ability to edit. At least you have a starting point that's not, that's not a blank page. You have a page full of text. All you've got to do is fix the grammar or you don't even have to fix the grammar. You just have to make sure that the words that you spoke. Hello, Hacks and Hobbies listeners. Are you looking to share your opinions? Give me feedback or tell me what you're thinking. Send me a voice message. Voice messages are an easy way for you to send me audio that might end up in future episodes of Hacks and Hobbies. They're the latest feature from Anchor, the platform I use to make this podcast. Here are some of the things I would love to hear from you. Are you enjoying the direction the podcast has taken for Season 2? Is there someone I can interview that will absolutely help you gain more knowledge? What do you think of the different topics that I talk about on the podcast with my guests? You can send me a voice message right now from wherever you're listening. Just tap the link in my show notes. I can't wait to hear from you. Are accurately represented in the text. Because sometimes the audio cannot understand your accent. There are ways to train the audio or train the system uh, to understand your audio and your interferences, but again, it's it's a work in progress. We don't have complete AI yet. Okay, you've got the publication. You've got um, you've published the podcast. You've got the transcription set up, and you've transcribed the text. Now you've got um, the same transcription going up on either you can update the anchor profile uh, there is a 3000 word limitation or you have your own dedicated website where which it is dedicated to the podcast for example hacks and hobbies has hacksandhobbies.com dedicated to the podcast you have every single episode that's been out on the different networks also available on the website and there's links available on the website that we talked about in each of the episode 
But again, I'm going through that same process of what I've told you. I've gone through the first few steps. I'm working on this transcription, figuring out this transcription service thing because that is time consuming, right? I have very limited time and I've got a few episodes that are in the backlog that I've got to go through and edit and publish. So it all comes down to, okay, how much time you got to take. And it's one of the reasons the past week was, you know, we, we didn't publish a lot of episodes because we have we published like 10 interviews in the last three weeks. And that's a lot of interviews to go through for anybody. So, so I've taken this time to, you know, figure it out, figure out my system, figure out the flow of everything and what should happen first, what should happen next and ne second, and how can I automate some of these things. Some of the things that I've automated is as soon as a new episode is published, it can go out on Facebook, it can go out on YouTube, it can go out on Twitter, and there's still some bugs that this application I'm using that's not able to do snippets. So I've got to figure out what's how to fix that area. But it's not a big deal. <clears throat> and what is this? So what is this last process that I'm talking about? This last process, well, it might not be the last, but this process is specifically all about marketing. You've got to market your podcast, your episodes, your guests to your audience or to people who might not know about it. And the one thing that I haven't been doing is I haven't been niching down because so so many of these podcast interviews are very broad. The one um, resonating factor, the one um, combined or the same, I can't even think of words sometimes. The one thing that I'm consistent on is learning about the story, stories of these guests. I have a consistent question, set of questions that I ask them. So I'm getting some kind of survey material down that can then go on the profile page for each of these guests on the website. Again, that aspect of it, that's another thing that I think, I'm thinking of doing. And I'm going through the different plugins to see which one looks the way I want it to look, which one has a clean look that I just want to show very specific things about my guests and the links and what we talked about on the podcast and those links to the podcast. So it all comes down to, okay, what am I looking for? And what do I think will be valuable for the audience that's coming to the website? <clears throat> learning about these guests okay so we talked a little bit about marketing very little bit about marketing talked about automation talked about having a dedicated website to the podcast the next thing is follow-up you've got to follow up with your guests that you've talked to and ask them hey what did you think what do you think uh, what did you think of the podcast interview that we just did and what you know how can we stay in touch? How can I help you in your in your you know in your journey, in your mission, in your goals to achieve this month or this year? So there's a lot of things you can do, and again, that promotes them. The one thing that I still haven't figured out or working on figuring out is when I do publish an episode for a guest. I'll reach out to the guest I'll, and I'll, I'll tell them, hey, your episode is going live tomorrow. Um, the link could be find, found over here. And, you know, share with your audience. Share with your people that you just had a chat with them. And then um, I also provide them with materials that they can use on Instagram or they can use on whichever social media platform they want to, to share and bring in their audience. And some people have been great. Some people have been amazing. Some people have been um, not connected. I guess, I guess it all comes down to what is the motivation of the guest? Uh, 
are they on are they coming on to promote something and i'm absolutely happy to promote their books or their um, products or their services or whatever it is they're offering i am happy to help out and happy to share it with um with you guys and and um it's it's the innate thing to do i mean the only reason i'm talking about that I've talked about the four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different things, uh, different products and services that I use myself is because I find real value in using these products. Otter.ai is amazing. Dreamhost.com, it provides an awesome hosting for me. Uh, WordPress is an amazing platform for you to grow your website um, from a simple blog simple single page website to a blog to a news site to a site where you can teach lessons to a site where you can sell products it is so much more than a simple um, blog system that it used to be so there's a lot of things that I'm passionate about and I love to use and bring attention to whomever might be listening so that's a little update uh, on this rainy February day as I take my commute to drive to work. Anyways, that is that is not all. Well, that was all in the aspect of okay, what do you look for when you when you're looking to start a podcast? What struggles that I'm facing and how I am solving some of the problems that I have. So there's. The three different tools specifically that I've um, invested in to help with the promotion and automation for the podcast. And um, you can find the links of those tools uh, here in the podcast episode notes whenever it goes out. And um, I don't forget to list them in there. So, yeah, that's... uh, that's what I've got. That's all I've... Uh, well, I still have more time to go to drive. Um, but I think that's that's pretty um, good and buttoned up. Uh, so there's at least 18 more interviews that are in the backlog. There's six more this week, uh, this coming weekend. And um, so it's just going to add on. It's just going to keep adding on. So I've got to I've got to figure out my my system quickly, so then I can continuously bring value, bring content, bring information, bring um, wisdom to your ears, and uh, it's it's just something that I'm super passionate about, and um, it helps me. Thanks for listening. Uh, again, if you guys have any questions at all, you're welcome to uh, give me a ring. Send me a message on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you find yourself to be. Just give me a holler, and I'll be more than happy to answer your question and even bring those questions on the podcast and um, talk about them, and uh, we can go from there.